Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be R-Type Complete for the Turbo Duo. Or more specifically, the PC Engine Duo. And it's a Super CD-ROM 2 disc. Or is it Super CD-ROM squared? I honestly don't know, but it has a little tiny 2 in the top right hand corner of the Super CD-ROM. Making it look like it's squared. But to be honest, I, I've never known how to pronounce it. But anyway, R-Type Complete is basically what it says. It's a complete version of R-Type. Um, in Japan, guys, let me give you a little bit of history lesson. In Japan, R-Type for the Turbo Graphics, also known as the PC Engine over there, was actually split up into two releases. Uh, the original R-Type, half of, half of the game, the first game, was released on one card. And then a second one called R-Type 2, was released separately and it was actually the second half of the first game so they were two separate releases uh, comprising of the entire game of the original R-Type. Now it was a fantastic conversion, it was an excellent conversion um, but in Japan you know it was split up into two releases and it was just like alright <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think that has ever been done before or since for a shoot 'em up I mean, if it has, you know, correct me, but it was just crazy. Uh, the American version the, for TurboGrafx, we actually got a full, complete card with both parts, basically the entire game on one card. Uh, we also got an extra boss fight uh, on one of the stages that wasn't actually in the original arcade game. Now, that might have actually been in the original card releases in, on, in Japan as well, but... I never actually uh, gave much time to both the separate parts from Japan. But anyway, what this release is, is the combination of both of those in the one game, or basically the American R-Type, you know, the complete version on CD, but it also has some extra stuff. As you can see, it's got some, you know, anime style cutscenes and whatnot. It's also got this really awesome beefed up CD-ROM soundtrack. And I don't know why I said CD-ROM soundtrack, but it's just a CD audio, and it's it's fantastic. It's great remixes of the classic R-Type tunes. So now, basically, what we're going to be doing, guys, is I'm going to be well trying to play this game to the best of my ability. It's actually been quite a while since I played the first R-Type, at least a few months. That's actually quite a while for me because I play so many games and. <laughs> If I don't play a game for a few months, I completely just forget it. And when I go back to play it, I am super rusty because I play so many different games. And, um, but yeah, we're going to be trying to play this game. We're going to be trying to see how far I can get. I have actually finished this game before. And to be honest, this is actually the only version of the original R-Type I have ever completed. Ironically, I've completed R-Type complete. <laughs> and no other version of the original R-Type. Not on, uh, not the original R-Type, on the PS1 R-Types, which was a compilation of R-Type 1 and 2. Um, not to be confused with the Japanese PC Engine R-Type 1 and 2, that's just R-Type 1 in two separate releases. But, the actual R-Type 1 arcade game and the R-Type 2 arcade game. Both phenomenal shoot 'em ups I love the R-Type series. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've never completed the original R-Type on that compilation. I've never completed the original R-Type emulated through MAME. Uh, I never even completed the original on the original TurboGrafx-16. I used to play the hell out of that game, um, but I never completed that one on its own. However, I have completed this one. And um, so yeah, we'll see how far I can get. It's been a long time since I've actually completed this one though. I mean, I remember doing that back in, oh man, this must have been like 2005 or 2006 when I actually completed this game. It was a really good feeling completing the first R-Type because I never thought I would. It gets really, really challenging towards the end of the game. And I know I'm not going to complete it on this playthrough. I mean, with some of my last shmup Let's Play videos, I just did terribly while trying to talk and play at the same time. So, I mean, this, this game is difficult enough as it is when you're just trying to focus on it and get to the end by yourself in solitude you know, talking about it and trying to do things like that and having my mind in one place while the game is in another is going to make things really interesting. I might die a lot. Um, you know, there might even be limited continues in this game. I don't, I don't know. Is this the same cutscene? I think it's still the same cutscene. 
This is really long. I have never watched this in this entire thing. I was just like, eh, lame. <laughs> and just hit start. And when you hit start, you're greeted with a really awesome remix of the original R-Type 1 intro theme. And but man, I never never thought it was gonna be this long. It is very long. It's pretty cool though. I like the the baseline in this uh, this track. It's pretty neat. It's actually extremely reminiscent of the bass lines in Super R Type from the Super Nintendo. I love that soundtrack. Super R Type has a phenomenal soundtrack. Lots of you got edgy music, you got funky music, you got driving music, you got chill music. It's so so good, and it's got this because the Super Nintendo uses you know it can use basically like real sound samples um, and have them just be be projected very clear. Uh, it, you know the first Super R Type, you could tell they're using like real you know, baseline samples and things like that. It, and the bass sounds very clear in that game. It's it's great. Uh, just like how the bass sounded in that little CD clip for the this intro here. Here we go, finally. All right. I hope that this didn't actually happen once already and I was just talking and not paying attention. I mean, that could very well have happened, but let's go ahead and hit start. And it looks like there are no options. No options at all. You just hit start and you go. But, uh, yeah, I love the soundtrack in this game. It's it's great. If you're a fan of the music in games like Super Art Type for the Super Nintendo, I think you're going to really like the soundtrack in this game. Um, it's good. Alright, almost there. But yeah, I absolutely loved how the soundtrack sounded in, uh, Super Nintendo Super Art Type. It's just so good. If you guys haven't played that game and you like the Art Type series, go play it. It's the black sheep of the family, but I think it's it's an excellent game. So here we are, finally into the game. Playing Art Type. Now I'm not gonna be using my uh, turbo fire, except for maybe at a at a part or two. I know there's a very specific part that I used to die at all the time and it was just <laughs> way too hard. Uh, without having the, the turbo fire. I'd really have to be on an arcade machine or something like that to to be able to press the button as uh, as quickly as they want you to on that one part For some odd reason the the PC engine controller and the the turbo graphics controller I have a harder time pressing the button rapidly and comfortably uh, than I do on other systems like I can I can wail on the Genesis controller fine I can wail on the Super Nintendo controller I can pound away at the NES controller without a problem all day long, but the the PC Engine controller and the Turbo Graphics controllers, it's just something about the shape. It doesn't feel right in my hands. I mean, I love the controllers. Don't get me wrong. This isn't like me bashing the controllers, but I just have a much di more difficult time uh, mashing the attacks or the buttons uh, just as quickly as I can on those other platforms. So. So that's one reason why I will be using the, the Turbo Fire at very specific sections in this game. When you're powered up, you really don't need Auto Fire. It's when you die and you get shot back to a checkpoint and they throw you right in the middle of a really difficult section and you have no power-ups or anything. And sometimes you just have to uh, use the Turbo Function to get through. Otherwise, you end up having to continue 30 times. Uh, not that the game even lets you continue that long. I don't th I don't think you get unlimited continues in this. I think it's limited So here we are we're at the first boss basically now in our type you can charge up your weapon just by holding on the fire button And it is super powerful if you've never played our type, but you want to try it out Get used to using your charge function the game is designed around it like this boss You can literally take down in like two hits with it boom. He's dead the game is designed around this. The third stage boss, I'm going to be able to kill him in one hit. One hit flat with a fully charged shot. Now, if you go up and you try to just shoot them, they take longer to kill. Now, your normal firepower, when it's, uh, you know, powered up, like I have right here, this uh, ring, laser sort of thing, really powerful. But, slicing through enemies with your charge beam is where it's at. You can cut through multiple enemies at once. 
it's especially good on really big enemies. Now for those that have not played the original R-Type, or any R-Type game for that matter, I mean, really, this is for anybody that hasn't played an R-Type game, or has only played R-Type Leo, because it doesn't really have this gameplay mechanic, um, is this pod in front of me. When you first start off, it's just your ship, and you fire. But, uh, when you pick up your uh, first piece of firepower, I did not want to get that. When you pick up your first piece of firepower, it'll actually bring out this pod, and you can actually attach it to the front or back of your ship. And basically what this pod does is it provides a little bit of protection from bullets and things like that. Also does a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of damage to enemies. And you can also shoot it out, use it as a projectile weapon. You can attach it to the back of you, like so. And I'm going to stop firing just so the flicker doesn't, uh, <laughs> so the flicker isn't as bad. And actually, I need to get... I want to get down there. Ah, crap. What I wanted to do is have the ring weapons. I'm going to sit down here on this guy's eye, and the pod's going to hit him. And my laser is going to also hit him. Oh, Flicker is so bad here. Oh my god. The thing about having the uh, the ring laser or the ripple laser, whatever you want to call it, it is just, it's pretty powerful for bosses as well. And it actually kind of ripples out above and below your pod, so you don't have to get as close to the boss's eye in order to, to kill him. Our type was initially called, well, a lot of people dubbed it a thinking man's shooter. It wasn't as straightforward as your normal shmups were back in the day. Bosses usually had weak spots you had to go, to, go for. Like that boss, you have to hit his eye in the dead center. And you can only hit it from the top. Which is weird. You know, you're facing the right and you're shooting right. But you have to hit it below you. Which, you know, it's not like you can aim down. So, you you know, you have to kind of finagle it. You have to get, get, get creative with it. Uh, and that's how the R-Type series has always been, and it's really one of the staples of the series. It's, you know, you kind of have to think about what you're doing a little bit. Um, I mean, it is basic, it's not like you're solving a massive puzzle uh, when, you, when you fight each boss, but it's not just simple run-and-gun gameplay like it is in most shmups. It's not like you just sit in the back of the screen, dodge bullets, and just keep mashing the fire button. It doesn't quite work like that. Not at all, actually. <laughs> R-Type rewards patience and accuracy more than it does uh, just flailing and uh, like in some other shooters. Some other shooters you can just get by with just mashing the fire button all the time. R-Type, you kind of have to think about what you're doing a little bit. You also kind of have to know uh, what's, what's coming up ahead of you, otherwise things can get really, really tricky. I just love the amount of creativity R-Type gives you, though. More, much more than the average shooter, and I think that's why the game was popular when it came out. Um, well, for one, back when it came out, it was actually probably kind of groundbreaking. I mean, I was just... I think I was like... Oh, jeez. When did this come out? In, in, like, arcades? Like, 87? 88? 89? Something like that? I, um... I was just a kid then. I was like probably six, seven, eight years old when this game came out. So, I mean, I never got to play it in the arcade back then. But I'm sure when it came out, it was pretty groundbreaking. Because, you know, what, what, what are some of the other shooters from back then? You had 1943. You had, um, I mean, I'm sure games like Galaga were still played a lot in the arcades. I um, mean, you still see those games in the arcades. They're just classics. Um... Raiden didn't come till after this game, or Raiden, if that's how you want to pronounce it. Um, man, what else was out at that time? Shmup wise, Sky Shark. I mean, things like that. Eh. Our type was uh, Tiger Heli, things like that. Our type was just, I think, even for the time, it was just very unique. And uh, yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that, and that's what I usually do when I try to talk and play a game at the same time. But this is the boss where I was telling you I could just kill him in one hit. So I've got my weapon charged. Go down. Boom, he's dead. Just like that. Full charge, right to the eye, he's gone. 
Now what's funny, there's a, a remake of R-Type on Xbox Live Arcade. Um, and that boss, you cannot kill him in one hit with the charge. It's just something about that port. Um, you, you can't kill him in one hit with the charge. And it kind of sucks because I, I'm so used to doing that. Even in the arcade version, uh, you can kill him in one hit. Um, or at least the one on the... Uh, PlayStation R-Types compilation, assuming that's a perfect port of the arcade game. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is actually just try to not talk. <laughs> so I can get through this stage without dying. Guys are gonna come up from the top and bottom. I mean, I've got the game memorized fairly well. I mean, this was a game I did play a lot back in the 90s, so I mean... When I had a Turbo Graphics for the first time, I ended up tracking down this game and played it into the ground. I loved this game back then. Still love the game today, but I mean, with just being a grown adult and having to work full time all the time, having a lot of different hobbies and and just hobbies, you know, it's it's hard to make time to play as many games as I used to, as frequently as I used to. Like, I can't just devote all my time to our type. There's so many other games I want to play and so little time. You know, back then, I was still in high school, and um, even when I did start working, I didn't work full-time. I might have worked like 20 hours a week or something like that, so it's not like it is now. And I really have to be selective about what I play. Um, I mean, I, I pick games out that I just want to play, but then there are, there are other games I also want to play, and it's just like... It's just hard to prioritize. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this boss is kind of annoying on this version because of all the damn flicker. It's hard to see the bullets sometimes. Just try to keep the pot in front of you. Oh god, this is awful. Oh, it's so bad! The flicker is just horrible. Now, R-Type is just, god, it was such a great port back then, but, on the Turbo Graphics, I mean, but man, the flicker on, the flicker's not too bad for, for the most part, but that boss in particular, the bullets just completely disappear, and you're like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> I've gotten killed because of a bullet that was just gone from my sight because of the flicker. That's how bad the flicker is in this game. It's not a reason to just not play it, because... I mean, the CD soundtrack makes up for it, and the game still plays great. It's still a lot of fun. But, you know, if you've never played this, and you get frustrated with that stuff pretty easily, you know, be warned. <laughs> there is a lot of flicker in this version. Oh, discus. He just talked about the disc in his hands. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew Japanese. That's one of the things that's kind of on my... Um, bucket list is try to learn at least a little bit of Japanese. Try to learn a little bit and try to be able to read some characters. Maybe I could make use of some of the Japanese import RPGs uh, that are out there. <laughs> I can actually play some of those games that never came out over here. That would be a good feeling, being able to play some games that you know that most other people will, will never get to experience. So, And actually understand what's going on without having to guess your way through menu systems and towns and role-playing games and things like that. Now in a lot of these Let's Play videos, I actually just, I always, I skip through the cutscenes because I'm like, who cares? Gameplay all the way, but I've never actually seen these cutscenes. I've never even watched them once. I've always skipped through them. Um, because I mean, as you could tell, they're not really all that exciting. We actually have no idea what they're saying. I mean, if I knew what they were saying, might be a different story. I might be, wow, that's deep. But it's not like that. It's not like that at all. I have no freaking clue what they're talking about. So, but I decided, you know, I've never seen the cutscenes. I'm sure some of you guys do want to see them. So, yeah, what the hell? Let's go ahead and watch them. <laughs> I'll just talk over them anyway, not that it matters, because none of us, except for maybe the one person watching this video that does speak Japanese, uh, none of us actually know what they're saying, so... <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> Look at his mouth moving. It's just up and down, up, down. Yet he's speaking like... That was a really bad impersonation. That was not meant to be like racist or anything like that. I can't... Obviously, I don't know Japanese, so... My impersonation of it was just god-awful. But again, I do want to try to learn some uh, phrases. I would like to actually learn to be able to speak a tiny bit in Japanese. Of course, you know, I say that about a lot of things. Like, I'd love to know how to speak Spanish. I'd love to know how to speak German. And, like, I'm never going to learn those languages, most likely. Not anytime soon. I mean, I have to really buckle down and do it if I want to do it. But Japanese actually has a practical app practical application though. Of course Spanish does too, considering I live in a highly populated uh, uh, Spanish-speaking area. But, um, and actually my job revolves around speaking to people that speak Spanish, so. But, um, J Japanese, you know, I could actually use it for gaming. I've already mentioned it, I can just play the games that are completely in Japanese from Japan that never came out over here. So that would be a huge reason for, for learning Japanese. My brother's also kind of into Japanese culture, certain aspects of it. He, he's been really getting into metal bands from Japan these last few years. And it would be cool to, to understand what they're saying in their music. And, you know, he even watches some Japanese movies and, uh, that are, they're subtitled, but it would be cool to watch the movie and hear it as it was intended, rather than hear it and um, just perceive it as it was intended immediately, instead of having to read a screen of text, and so... So these guys you can kill in one hit if you hit their heads, but they do kind of splatter out, so you have to be careful about that. Watch out for enemies coming from the tops and bottoms of the screen. There's gonna be some guys that come out and they start shooting lasers at you, so you have to watch out for that. Now the game is definitely, whoa. The game is definitely a lot easier once you have the pods and stuff of going above you that help you out shooting, things like that. Um, yeah, these guys is what I was talking about, actually. But it's once you die, <laughs> that's when the game becomes really, really challenging. Same thing goes for the Gradius series. Gradius especially is just absurdly difficult once you lose all your power-ups. It's a walk in the park when you have your power-ups, on some parts. <laughs> uh, but... Once you lose your power-ups, you are... You are screwed. Majorly screwed. Now this guy, tons of flicker again. Just try to shoot his pods. It's easiest for me to try to destroy them without having to go under him. And that's the boss. Wow, that was a lot easier than I remember. Maybe I'm just getting lucky. <laughs> maybe I'm just getting lucky. Or maybe it's secretly on easy mode and I have no idea. Now this level is really, really tricky. You really have to, well, know where things are coming from. Otherwise you are going to die. That is how this stage works. And... Frick. Damn it, man. Hey, this is going to be interesting now. <laughs> Alright. Try to get that guy. Try to get your first power-up, because your shield is going to help you a lot. You can hit the edges of these guys. That's how you can destroy them. Just like so. I think I can get down here. Oh god, I basically have to figure this out on video. This is pretty pathetic. <laughs> it's been so long since I've played uh, this stage. This is actually the level where there is a extra boss that I don't believe is in the arcade game. Really cool stuff.
But up here, this is the part I was telling you about where I'd have to use my rapid fire. And just look at all those guys up there. Of course, it's not really all that necessary because I have at least the pod. Urgh. That might have been a speed up power up there. Oh, I didn't even touch it. Come on. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. That kind of almost ruins my chance of surviving here because this part is just stupid. Really, really stupid. I really want to get that power up down there, that little guy. Ah, he doesn't fly up all the way. Shit. I had a way for getting that. I don't remember how I did that. Alright, so get over because there's a dude coming on. He's going to run straight into me. This is the boss right here, the first part anyway. Oh, what? He shot, but my pod didn't absorb the bullet. That was some BS too. Come on, R-Type. You're killing me here. Killing me. Literally. <laughs> I'm dying in the game. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is where I start cursing profusely. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to definitely continue a few times as I play the game. God, man. That's exactly why I use the auto fire there, because it's hard as shit. Continue 9. Well, it doesn't say I have any limits, apparently. If I do, it'll just take me right back to the title screen. <laughs> okay, that that is just just amazing. <laughs> uh, that's not gonna work. Well, actually, maybe I'm gonna try something. Oh, crap. I figured it out. <laughs> oh, man. I feel pretty good now. <laughs> Alright. That's how I'm going to get the power up. Oh, shit. That's not how I'm going to get the power up. Oh. Game over again. Let's get a Sega game over theme in there. Game over, yeah! Whatever it is, <laughs> Daytona, USA, Sega Rally. <laughs> R-Type with Sega Game Over the- Oh, fuck. Too busy talking. Alright, time to focus. Time to focus. We're focusing, guys. What the fuck, man? It's like the- God. The second he pops out, he shoots. It's like, shit. Urgh. It's not going to work. <laughs> this is pathetic. Pathetic. Why did I do that? Go over. Shit. I'm trying to take the easy way out and it's it's only working like one out of ten, <laughs> one out of every 10 tries. Like that. I went up too late, or not too late. Can't even talk straight. Went up too early and slammed into the wall, which is bad. Slamming into walls is not good, especially in shooters. Especially in shooters where you die when you hit the wall. Crap. I got this thing going the wrong way, and I'm not going to be able to get that power up. Fuck, man. What? I didn't touch it. <sighs> The hitboxes are a little wonky in this version too, I suppose, because I definitely did not touch that. But I still died. So, thanks, R-Type. Oh, so that's how I did it. <laughs> Could've just done that the first time.
Now this part is going to be a major pain in the ass because... Because I don't have my laser. The reflective laser thingy. It's only the first part of the boss fight. This is the new part that they added to this version. And if you die, I think you have to do that all over again. And if I remember, this guy was a pain in the ass. And of course, there's Flicker. Oh, Flicker. Wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't so much flick here, but you were like, oh, I just died! And then you're like, wait, I didn't die? Because <laughs> the flicker is so bad, it made it look like I died. And then there are other times where it doesn't look like you die, but you do die because of the flicker. Oh, that was bad idea. Bad fucking idea, man. Why don't I do that? I'm playing- I, I have to stay up there. That's how R-Type is. You can't just dick around unless you're fully powered up. It just doesn't work. You die. You die miserably. Like I am right now. That's- that's R-Type. I know better than that. Why am I playing like that? Ugh. <sighs> Note to self, never play a shmup again <laughs> during a Let's Play session. Oh, come on, man! I missed the weapon pod. If you miss the weapon pod, you're screwed. You might as well just kill yourself. Might as well run into a wall. Fuck. I'm focused. I was focusing on the pod and I didn't move up fast enough. See, I mean, our type requires your utmost attention at all times. I mean, it just does not work any other way, and that's how our type is. I think our type is kind of a love it or hate it kind of game. I'm sure a lot of people actually really dislike this game because it is like this. I mean, you, this is probably my 15th time at least trying this, and you guys are probably bored by this point. Probably, unless you like. What the fuck? I don't want to throw my controller because I'm actually selling my Turbo Duo and I don't want to break the controller before I have to ship it out. <laughs> oh, shit. What the fuck, man? It's like sometimes they just shoot a shitload of bullets and other times they just say, Oh, fuck it, we'll let them pass this time. Let's just let them pass. Gah! <laughs> We're up to 34 minutes, you know, if I keep this up much longer... I'm probably gonna have to chop this up. This is getting entirely too long just for screwing up over and over and... and much longer for my tastes, anyways. I don't, uh... Not a huge fan of watching Let's Plays where people just die over and over. But then again, it's people that... Maybe it's just... The Fuck! Maybe it's just the Let's Plays I'm watching that annoy me because a lot of times it's just some like hipster that's like never played a shooter before and they die on the first level or it's like they're playing super mario brothers and they die on like the first goomba over and over and over you're just like get off the screen dick <laughs> in this case i actually know how to play the game it's not like i'm purposely dying now it is a little challenging to talk and play at the same time now don't get me wrong i will admit that and, you know, I have to re I have to remember that before I get really pissed off at the game, because, I mean, it's just, it comes with the territory. It's tough to talk and play at the same time. Um, especially, like, fast-paced games, faster-paced games like this. Fucking hitbox. And again, you, I mean, the game does not have uh, my entire undivided attention, because... I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. 
So... Let me just stop talking. <laughs> Much better. He goes R type. <laughs> it's a sample that goes R type on B. It's hilarious. Hilariously awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, let's not die here. That would be good. Flicker is so horrible. Can I literally just sit back here? Oh no. Probably a bad idea. Really bad idea! Shit. <sighs> Alright, one more continue and then that's it. One more continue and then that's it. I'm gonna give up after this. <laughs> Flip the turbo switch back up. I seriously don't remember the flicker being that bad. That is just awful. I mean, one more continue until I get to the boss, so if I don't get to the boss, this continue, I'll continue again. <laughs> God, shit, man! Because I don't have- I don't want to throw this controller. I want to, like, reach down and throw my, uh, my big-ass Pelican Arcade stick. <laughs> throw it through the fucking window. <laughs> this shit is pissing me off. Pissing me off. <laughs> Yet I'm laughing. You guys are like, Austin, you're not pissed off. You're lying. It's like, I need to keep laughing, otherwise I am going to do it. For you guys that saw my, uh, my write-in long play or raid-in long play for the, uh, for the PlayStation, you saw that I actually broke a controller during that Let's Play. I got pissed off. Chucked my PS2 controller on the ground. was like, fuck! And then realized it was basically like it was starting to come apart, and the analog stick was just completely broken. <laughs> the R2 button had popped out of its slots, and the bottom half of the controller had basically cracked apart. I was like, wow. Thankfully, PS2 controllers are super cheap these days. You can find them for like $5 on the used market. You know, you, you how some people you can probably get them for free in certain video game bundles. I mean, that's how I got mine. I bought a PS1 system uh, for like 10 bucks at the store. And they're like, oh yeah, it's got everything with it. Well, it turned out it had everything with it, but it also had some extra PS2 controllers with it. And I was just like, you know, just people thought it was a PS1 controller. And it's like... So it's really easy to amass a bunch of uh, PS2 controllers these days. Fuck, man! And, you know, without a weapon, it's it's tough to kill that boss. I, I'm gonna have to just sit in front of him because sitting at back does you absolutely no good if you don't have any power-ups. I mean, because nothing's going to hit him. That's just how it works. Why did they have to start the checkpoint right here? You know, if it was just up, like, I don't know, half an inch, it wouldn't be so goddamn bad. But they start you right here. You gotta kill this fucking stream of enemies over and over and over again, and it sucks.
Oh, hey, what do you know? Look at that. That's a piece of work. Huh. <laughs> Wish I figured that out the first time. I know I've done that before, but I just... When you don't play a game for so long, you just... You forget. You forget the tricks of the trade. It's... That's just how it works. I mean, even games like Castlevania, like the original Castlevania, I'm very familiar with. If I take, like, a couple year long break on it and I go back to it, I'm rusty. I have to kind of relearn certain aspects. I have to relearn... Fuck! Why did I do that? Why the fuck did I do that? I'm too busy fucking talking and playing, and I'm getting killed by stupid shit. Stupid fucking shit. The first half of this video is just like trying to, like, Austin, don't curse. Say frick, or say frack, or say... Just pause for a second and say shoot instead of shit. And now I'm just like, fuck it. Who cares? I don't care. <laughs> anymore. I really gotta cut this off. I'm gonna just... I've already made myself look like an asshole. And I am, but... It's just... That's besides the point. <laughs> it's not the point of this video. Trying to survive an R-Type. And this is actually a level I should be able to complete. Technically, I have completed it. I've completed it like... God damn it! <sighs> Technically, I've completed it like... Seven times. But they had to add that new fucking boss to this version. The PlayStation version, he's not there. And I'm assuming that's like an arp- pretty much an arcade perfect port. Either it's reprogrammed, or they somehow cooked up some really slick emulation on the PlayStation. Which, I mean, from what I understand, the PlayStation wasn't really powerful enough to do strict- straight-up emulation. Um... I mean, you get- I, I- I played, like, Master System emulators on a PlayStation, and it was just awful. I mean, if- if the system can't emulate a Master System at full speed, there's no way in hell it can emulate our type at full s fucking speed. Jesus. Ugh. <sighs> so I'm assuming that that's a really, really close to arcade port, and that that boss was just never in the arcade game. God damn it, man! There's no- the thing is, there's no pattern to this, like... On one playthrough, one enemy will shoot at a certain time, and on another playthrough, he'll shoot at another time, and so it adds this... ...layer of unpredictability, and when you have... ...no fucking speed power-ups, you have no fire power-ups... ...you're it, it's- it makes it, like, nearly impossible, you know? It makes it just... It's like Russian roulette. Which cup am I gonna fucking drink out of? Am I gonna die this time, or... Am I gonna survive? Is the guy next to me gonna fucking die? Nope, that's me. I just got the poison cuff. Fucking amazing. That's what they should call Artai. Russian fucking roulette. Minus the Russians. <laughs> Five continues ago, I said just one more continue. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm gonna uh make myself go insane. Oh <laughs> I did not get hit by that bullet. That was an example right there of shitty hit detection. It's not as bad as say Sky Shark Sky Shark and the Ape Nintendo. I mean the bullet will literally be like a ship's like, distance away, and you will die. Alright, fuck it. This auto-fire shit's not working. I'm gonna try to just mash it. Mash it like I mash my- my arcade stick. Shame this is a turbo duo. I could use, uh, my Pelican arcade stick. Of course, I'm sure that would be pretty annoying. Wow, that didn't help at all. <laughs> I don't know, let's just use the, uh, the lower level of firepower. Oh, 
Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta- Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just using the medium grade fire- fire rate. Here's the fastest one. Here's the medium one. <laughs> oh, man. I hate this game. Why did I just say that? I love R-Type. I love R-Type. This is gonna be sacrilege to most, I'm sure, but I think Super R-Type and the Super Nintendo is my favorite R-Type. No, that's not true. R-Type Delta is my favorite R-Type. Easy. Hands down. Probably... Ugh! Probably mainly because I can actually finish them. I've only completed the original R-Type once. On this version. Ever. I've never completed R-Type 2. I think R-Type 2 is just way too goddamn hard. Way too hard. It is just ridiculous. If you guys think this one's tough, you haven't seen shit. Until you play R-Type 2. R-Type 2 is just nuts. I don't think I can even get halfway through R-Type 2. I can get to like the fourth level. I think it's the fourth level. Where these guys come out. They shoot across the screen and they, they form blocks behind them. And you can't shoot through them most of the time. And they end up forming these patterns that are just ridiculously difficult to get through. And not only is the stage stuff, but then you get to the boss, and the boss is a fucking pain in the ass. So every time you die at the boss, you gotta go through a bitch section like this. And it just, it's... Alright, fuck it. I'm done. That's, that's it. Wait, no, I'm not done. I got the controller! I had one more life. Ah! <sighs> I'm getting tired of hearing that game over theme. I'm just getting wrecked by this game. I did so well getting up to this point, and now I'm just getting demolished. The stage before this, I was like, is this on easy mode and I don't know it? <laughs> nope. Nope, it's not. Definitely not. Nope. Shit. And I missed the power up. And I missed that one. No, oh, this is gonna be fun. Why am I even using this? <laughs> this game's so realistic. Enemies can shoot right through enemies. This music is so cheesy. This is one of the actually, this is actually one of the tunes in the game I had never really cared for. I'm not a fan of like, cheesy, happy-go-lucky music like this. Yeah! No, never, ne never ever have I ever been a fan of video game music like this. But I love the boss theme! <laughs> oh man. I especially love the one in uh, Super R-Type, Super Nintendo. Had to mention that one again. Yep. Because it's an awesome game. It's underrated. Shame it had to have so much slowdown. At least it doesn't have as much fucking flicker as this game does. Shit. I'll take the slowdown over goddamn flicker. Seriously, guys. I would much rather have tons of slowdown than have shit tons of flicker and I can't see what the hell I'm doing. I mean, actually, I think there is a little bit of flicker in Super Art Type 2, but it's not... <laughs> nearly to this level. It's not even close. Wow. And what throws me off there is because is the flicker. Is the bullets, they keep flickering and I'm like, shit, am I going to dodge it? And it's really hard for me to focus on it. It's really hard for me to focus on it because it's constantly blinking. I'm like, I can't even focus on dodging it because it's fucking blinking. It's like a strobe light in my face. Shit, I think I'd rather have a strobe light and try to play this game. Strobe light in my face and try to play this game. Now, even if I get to the boss, there's no way in hell I'm going to beat him because I don't have my weapon. I just have this piece of crap, my stock, my stock weapon. That's it. So, I mean, I might as well just give up now.
Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> R type. <laughs> Gotta love early 90s CD music. Wow, the What? What? I was like, wait, there's a cubby. Maybe I can hide in there. And his eye bulges out and kills me. We're up to the 51 minute mark. I've spent at least 15 minutes on this single part. And I'm still playing. As pissed off as I've fucking gotten. All right, I'm gonna have to draw the line here very, very shortly. I've probably been playing this part longer than 15 minutes. This is probably like half the video. <laughs> Cheesy music. Cheesy music. All right, that's it. Game over, guys. Let's play done. <laughs> I, I'm surprised I let it go this long and haven't broken anything yet. I mean, not normally an angry person. Well, maybe sometimes. Or all the time, because I work a shitty help desk job. <laughs> but I... Fuck. I just... Normally these days, I don't sit and play a really difficult part like I used to. Like... Back in the day, I probably would have played that part for like an hour and a half, literally trying to beat that section. Nowadays, I die like twice, and I'm like, all right, click, system off. Next game. I mean, that's how I am. Because once I start dedicating myself to something like this and trying to actually complete it and perfect it, that's when I start to really get pissed off. Like, I start breaking stuff. I start throwing my controller across the room. Because I feel like I should be able to do it. It's not doesn't seem that hard to me, but I still can't fucking do it. It's just like... Ugh. So, you know, these Let's Plays are really... They kind of put me in a place I'm not used to being in anymore. Is... I just don't practice these games like I used to. The, 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 well, the difficult games. Granted, a lot of games seem difficult to a lot of people, but I don't really think they are. And they just require, you know, experience in certain kinds of patterns in video games. A lot of video games share the same kinds of enemy patterns, the same kinds of enemy traits. And once you're used to all that, you know, some games are still a walk in the park, even though they might seem difficult to some people. And that's how a lot of games are for me. But there's the occasional game like this. It's mostly in the shoot 'em up genre, really, that I, I just, I have to keep myself away from. I can't focus on them for extended periods of time because I will break something. It's guaranteed. I mean, the other day, um, a few weeks ago, I was like, I'm gonna try to get good at Geometry Wars Retro Revolved in the 360 again. Or 360 again. I'm starting to slur my speech now. Probably have been doing that the entire episode. But it, needless to say, at the end of my hour-long session, I had broken my Xbox 360 controller. I was so pissed. I mean, that's a game I've been playing for six years, though. I mean, I've been playing it since it came out. So it's like, you know, I, a lot of times I'm already on edge from just working a really busy, stressful job. It's a really stressful time out at work. And I should be playing games to relax, but I play these games that put me even farther on edge. And they don't just put me on edge because of the adrenaline rush you get when you play them, but they also put me on edge because I feel like I shouldn't be dying, you know, when I do. And it is just extremely frustrating. Like, super frustrating. I, I literally start to break stuff. Like, my controllers, I've gone through so many controllers over the years. It's, 
I, I can't I can't sit and play these games all the time. I need like an arcade machine where you can pound on it, give it one good jam, and you don't damage anything. You damage your hand, and so you're like, fuck, I won't do that again. Sorry, sorry, Radiant Silver Gun. <laughs> it's like, or like a pinball machine. You get pissed off at a pinball machine, and you shake it. You go, fuck, and you're shaking the machine. And then you fucking knee it, and you're like, ah, and you're on the ground crying because you just need a coin box, and it's really sharp, and you have a bruise three weeks later from it. I need to be in situations like that where if I get pissed off, it's gonna hurt me, and I won't do it again. <laughs> Console games that are just intense, I... Like our type like this last level, like you have to have, it has, you have to have your utmost attention when you're playing it. You can't be talking and playing. You can't be dwelling on thoughts while you're playing this game. Our type is not that kind of game. It's you, you just cannot play it if you're like that. If you're the kind of person that plays a game and you're playing the game, but you're really zoning off into in thoughts in your head instead of really focusing on the game, don't play our type. <laughs> you're going to get pissed off. That is that is how this game works. So all right, guys, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just wrap things up here. I apologize for being so negative, but I'm sure for some of you guys, it, it made it pretty entertaining. Uh, I was not intending to get pissed off. I was just like, I, I really thought that, you know, if I got a game over, I would just stop. But I got stuck at the part I thought I would get stuck at. And I should have known better. Like, I should have known I was going to get agitated at that part. I didn't expect it to be as annoying as it was, though. Like, just dying at that long stream of enemies you have to deal with every time you, you restart. It just, it's so, it's just so grating. It's just like, ugh. <sighs> so frustrating. I mean, I love the R-Type series. It's definitely one of my favorite shmup series. It's been one of the most consistent shoot 'em up series. I mean, I can't think of a bad R-Type game. Can't think of one at all. I'm trying to think of one. I mean, there's there's been bad ports, like, you know, not even bad per se, just like far from arcade perfect because of the hardware they're on, like the Game Boy R types, you know? Still cool versions, but you're not going to play those over the arcade version. Well, maybe you will if you don't want to get as frustrated. They're a hell of a lot easier. Even the Master System version is, is pretty decent for what it is. Um, I can't, I mean, wow. R-Type, such a great series. I mean, the only problem is it's extremely frustrating. It's, uh, and that's why I think Super R-Type on the Super Nintendo is one of my favorites because I'm so familiar with it that I don't have the problems in that game like I have in this game, at least on normal. Once I crank it up to hard, I can get, get pretty far in hard. I can probably rush through most of the game on hard. And then when you beat hard, you unlock promo. No, that's, that's, that's tough. <laughs> But that's, that's promo, they call it pro. Or maybe it's expert, and then you unlock pro? I don't remember which one it is, but you unlock another difficulty after hard, and it's just, it's ridiculously hard. And, um... But R-Type Delta on the PlayStation is a bit of the same way. It's challenging, but it's not, like, this challenging. I mean, it's much more manageable, partially due to the, the power-up upgrades they have in that game. They're... They're, they're much more useful. Uh, even your, your pods do different things and that they don't do in this game. So it gives you more of a chance, gives you more of a fighting chance. And uh, man, R-Type Delta, that's such a great game. Maybe I will do a Let's Play on that one down the road because that is a fantastic game. I should I should just review that game. That's one of my favorite shoot 'em ups from that, that time period. But yeah, R-Type series, super hard. But I think those two are probably my favorites because they're manageable for me. Um, arcades, R-Types 1 and 2 have never completed. This specific R-Type I've only completed once, so that should put things into perspective. And I've played these games a lot. A lot. So, I mean, they're tough. Not for the faint of heart, I suppose. <laughs> Unless you find one where you can put it on easy. Uh, Super R-Type, you can also put it on easy, so I do recommend that one. It's much easier to get through if you put it on easy. Enemies die faster, there's less of them, they shoot less bullets, you know. You don't have that in this version as far as I can tell. You might actually have it here, you, there just might be a cheat code that I don't know about, so. 
<sighs> Alright guys, well, I don't want to keep you guys any longer. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here as usual. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, if you like these shenanigans where I'm cursing at the screen, well, to be honest, they don't actually come all that often. This is actually kind of a rare ordeal for me, just getting pissed off at a game. Normally, I'm very calm, and, you know, I'm more, most of the videos I do are just normal reviews, casual reviews. I have to be calm for those, you know. I, it's not really in my shtick to be a crazy lunatic, but I'm just naturally getting pissed off playing this game, and I'm just like... Okay, I don't care. They can hear me curse. It's all right. But uh, most of my videos aren't like this. So, you know, this is kind of a rare gem. Uh, well, my Lords of Thunder and Raiden Let's Plays notwithstanding. <laughs> but uh, I do have a lot of stuff on the way as usual. And, uh, you know, definitely subscribe if you, uh, if you want to see more of this. So, uh, anyway, guys, I'll be back with some more videos sometime soon. Uh, until then, take care.